The American Recut, a spoiler-free review show where I, Nick, and I, Brendan, dissect films and television to save you from atrocious media. Scary stories to tell in the dark. A group of teens face their fears in order to save their lives. Directed by Andre Overdahl, written by Dan Hagman and Kevin Hagman. Also, special mention to Guillermo del Toro, who also helped write and produce it. Uh, yeah, so uh, today's film is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, an adaptation of the book from, I want to say it's like the 60s, 50s, and it just keeps on kind of coming back around and around and around. It, okay, wait, so this was based off a book, popular book series back in the 60s? Like, well, uh, the, the singular book, The Standalone. Everybody read this book in, like, elementary school. Not me, I just stuck with Goosebumps. <laughs> Oh, you poor sweet summer child. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a lot of the monster designs are based on images from the book, which explains a lot of the monsters. No shit, okay. But uh, anyways, though. Uh, yeah, so scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, let's just go through our usual points because this is a hard one to get into much without spoilers. Yeah. So uh, first off, the story. It's serviceable in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It works well enough. Don't expect miracles, but I'll get into what I mean by that later. Uh, the effects. Superb. Superb. Uh, it has excellent CG. It, the monsters do look good, and generally they're designed in a way where they both contrast with their environment in really grotesque ways, but also end up kind of fitting in for the situations. Yeah. Um, the town itself looks pretty good. There's a lot of good camera angles, especially early on. Yeah. And generally, the effects feel good in this movie. Admittedly, when I heard that Guillermo del Toro's name was associated with this, I was hoping for a lot more practical effects, but it is largely CG. It still works, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, uh, characters. Uh, they work. You know, I mean, we do have... Uh, typical archetype horror movie characters, you know, the know-it-all, the bum, the prom queen, the what have you. You know, I mean, throwaway characters, but uh, we do have a... Uh... I kind of disagree at the throwaway. I feel like they work better than I expected for a movie like this. Hmm. They were, they had things going for them, generally. I don't think they were used to their fullest potential, but I think this character movie had unexpectedly interesting characters. I'll give you that. Uh, the story was a bit rushed. Uh, well, the movie itself was a bit rushed. It was, it was what, like a 90-minute film, so... Something like that. It, yeah. It was average length. Yeah, average length. So not a whole lot of time to fit in a whole bunch of character development in there, but the characters were pretty good. Uh, protagonist was pretty good. Uh, she was okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, themes. Themes is an odd one in this movie. It's really odd. Okay, did you pick up on any themes in this movie? I, because I that I was I was too scared to think. And also, um, <laughs> um, there are a number of themes in this movie, which I'm not sure if they're spoiler or not. So I'm going to lean on the side of spoilers. But I think that the broad message for themes in this movie is that there's hints of themes, and they kind of get started on some tracks of themes, but I don't think they really take it anywhere hmm that's ultimately my feelings on it uh, what about you uh I, I honestly couldn't think of any themes I just well <laughs> hmm uh gosh if I had to think of a theme on the spot I would say the truth shall set you free or some kind of funny uh, baloney something like that but that's in so many of these kinds of horror movies truly yeah <laughs> it's the yeah alright so uh with that aside oh. would you like to go what would you ah would you recommend seeing this movie in theaters? I'm on the fence here. I think that for what it is, and for the way it's marketed, it's a bit misleading. This very clearly does not seem to have like a young demographic, like it seems to suggest from a lot of the ads. Yeah. It seems to skew surprisingly older, yeah. except for certain parts where it skews younger again. I think that this is better than you would expect if you were like, interested in the Goosebumps movie, but didn't want to just, like, see a kid's movie. <laughs> but I, I I, don't know if I recommend it or not. I think that if the movie looks interesting to you, give it a shot. But this is one where, because of a few oddities I'll talk about in the ramble on, it's hard for me to give a definite yes or no. Ooh, okay. See, I'm also on the fence as well, mainly because, you know, I mean, uh, it's definitely a scary movie, and I, I, I enjoy a good horror myself, but, uh, and it, it was pretty up there on the on the spooky scale. 
However, for what the trailer seemed to advertise, it seemed a little lacking. I, I don't know if it was lacking. It felt like I got more than the trailers offered, because I was getting like a real like kind of kitty goosebumps knockoff feel from the trailers. You know what I mean? I, I guess. But it skews way older. It, it's odd. Uh, we'll talk about it in <laughs> the next part. All right. Yeah, we will uh, thoroughly dissect this a little more in the ramble on. Uh, we will see you there, folks. See you after the skip.